Whether you like them or not, Performance Max campaigns seem to be here to stay. Google's already made all of the shopping campaigns roll into Performance Max, and now there are ways to incorporate DSA campaigns into your Performance Max campaigns. It seems like every other week there's some announcement about different functionality with Performance Max campaigns. And quite frankly, Google's just not going to be rolling out lots of updates to something that they're not heavily invested in. One of the reasons that a lot of my clients haven't liked Performance Max campaigns in the past is the lack of control that we had over the different landing pages that could be used. But one of those adjustments that I mentioned is actually within the URL controls for Performance Max campaigns. So in this video, I want to walk you through the four different levels that you can use in Performance Max, whether it's full automation, full control, or somewhere in the middle. This Pay Media Pros video is sponsored by Optio, the smarter, more efficient way to manage Google Ads. Optio's platform operates as a second pair of eyes on your accounts, regularly monitoring performance trends to make data-driven optimization suggestions for keyword strategies, bid optimizations, ad copy creation, and more. Better yet, you can save time by implementing their suggested changes directly in their user-friendly interface. Optio is extending their free trial period for Paid Media Pros viewers for 60 days, meaning you get two full months of testing and using Optio on your accounts before you pay a dime. If you're interested in giving it a shot, click the link on the screen right now or in the video description to get started. To walk you through the different URL control levels with Performance Max, I'm actually just going to create an entire new campaign because as you go through the campaign setup process, you'll encounter each of the different options that you have available, depending on which settings you choose. So I'm going to come over to create a new campaign. I'm going to create a brand new campaign. Just for fun, I'm going to choose campaign without a goals guidance, performance max. I'm going to leave it as the account default goals. Click continue. We'll set up the campaign name. Sure, we'll just use performance max six. Sounds good. For now, I don't want to talk about any of the different bidding strategies or the customer acquisition piece. So we're just going to click skip or next, as they like to call it. And now on this page is where we're going to encounter all of the different types of controls that we can utilize for Performance Max. If you were to just come to this page, choose your locations and languages, you would be opting into the first strategy of URL controls with Google. And that's full automation, where Google has complete control over what URLs you're using in your Performance Max campaigns. You can file this one under the category of opting you into something that you may or may not understand. But if you come down into this automatically created assets window, open it up, you can see that Google has opted us into, by default, automatically created assets for text assets, as well as final URL expansion. And they describe that by saying that they will send traffic to the most relevant URLs on your site when it's likely to result in better performance. It does require that the text assets box is checked, just so any ad copy will be relevant to the landing page. But again, this is what you're automatically opted into when you create a Performance Max campaign and don't adjust any other settings. Odds are most advertisers are using this simply because they don't even know it's down here. In the description, you can see that you allow Google to help you generate assets for your ads using content from your landing page, domain, and ads. So the final URL expansion uses the information on your website landing pages to identify different relevant search terms, and it says that it'll probably help you improve performance. So effectively, Google gets the information about how to expand your URLs from the final URL you'll provide in the asset group. That's how they are able to obtain your domain and find new pages on your website. My guess is that a handful of you are already seeing the next URL strategy that you can use for Performance Max campaigns. And that's going to be where you have partial automation and you provide exclusions for your URLs, but you still opt into Google's automations. To provide specific exclusion URLs in your Performance Max campaigns, you're still going to be in this automatically created assets section. So you would still have to open that up in the campaign setup. But then down below final URLs, you'll see exclude some URLs. If you've run dynamic search ads campaigns in the past, this is going to feel very familiar. Here you can enter specific URLs that you want to exclude from your Performance Max campaigns. You can create rules to exclude certain URLs based on what they contain. So on our website, let's say that we wanted to exclude anything that had blog in it. I would just come in this field, type in blog, click add, and then click apply. And then you'll see down here that in the exclusion rules, any URL that contains blog is going to be excluded from the options for final URLs for our Performance Max campaigns. I wanted to add in an example because from what I can tell, this is really the only area that you're going to be able to see that these URLs are excluded. 
So if at any point you're trying to audit a Performance Max campaign or make sure that you have URL exclusions added, you'll need to hop back into the campaign settings section, open up this automatically created assets, and make sure that there is a list down here of URLs that are being excluded. For now, I'm just gonna remove this, and that's gonna lead us into the final option that we have here as well for URL controls with Performance Max campaigns. Now we're getting into partial control where you provide URLs for Google to choose from or URLs for Google to exclude. I group these two together because they both operate on page feeds. When we're in this section, you can see that you can exclude some URLs and you'll notice that I also skipped over the custom labels section. To add a custom label, you need to apply page feeds to your campaign. So let's go ahead and do that as the targeting option. If I'm going to uncheck final URL, because I don't want Google to do any sort of expansion, I'll close this section, go down to more settings, I can scroll down, and you can see page feeds are here. So if I open this up, you can add a page feed to specify which URLs to use in your campaign. It does clarify that you can leave final URL expansion on with page feeds, and if you do that, you will use all of the URLs Google knows about your website including those in your page feed. But if you turn off final URL expansion, like I did in this example, you will only use the URLs from your page feed. So again, if you're trying to be really specific with the pages that you're targeting, opting out of final URL expansion and providing a page feed is probably gonna be a better idea. In this account, we do have some very basic page feeds. So let's just say we wanna target only page feed two. It was set up for DSA for a video that we did a while ago. But with this added, we are targeting only the pages in this feed for the Performance Max campaigns. So this allows us to have some level of dynamic landing page to it and dynamic ad copy, but also controlling exactly which pages to use. But if we wanted to go the other way and utilize page feeds just as an exclusion, we would then leave page feeds applied in this section, head up to the automatically created assets, click the final URL option, exclude some URLs, Custom labels is already chosen, and now we would have to add in the labels that are in the page feed that are applied to this campaign. So depending on how much automation you wanna lean into with page feeds, you can use them either as the exclusionary option and only exclude certain pages from your page feed, or you can use them as the targeting option and target only pages in your feed. And that brings us to the last type of URL control, which is full control, where only the URLs you provide are the ones that are being used for your Performance Max campaigns. For this, we're going to opt out of all automation and make sure we're targeting only the specific pages that we want. So for this option, we're gonna remove the page feeds, close that down, and they're going to opt out of final URL expansion. At this point, we've done all of the different controls to make sure that we are narrowed down only to the specific pages that we want. And then as we get into the next step, where we start to put together our asset groups, we'll be able to provide a final URL for each asset group, and that will be the only one utilized for this Performance Max asset group. And if you were to create more asset groups with different URLs, only those final URLs would be utilized for your Performance Max campaigns. This is gonna be the best option if you only have some really specific pages you can use on your website that are commercial friendly, or if you really need to make sure that you're only sending people to a specific page for a certain campaign or a certain effort that you're trying to put forward. Personally, I'm in the camp of automation being very helpful, but it needs to take my direction. I would probably find myself somewhere in the middle potentially using page feeds either for targeting or exclusion, depending on the client's website. But each of these four different strategies, whether it's full automation through Google, full control by you, or somewhere in the middle, there's bound to be a strategy that's going to work well so that you can work on taking advantage of Performance Max campaigns. Because again, it seems like they're gonna be sticking around for a while. Google doesn't make lots and lots of updates and roll things together in the same way that they are for this campaign type if it's not gonna be sticking around. Hopefully you now have a better sense of how you can control your Performance Max campaigns to ensure that they're doing what you want them to do and not just what Google wants them to do. But if you have any questions about the URL controls for Performance Max, or anything else about the Google Ads infrastructure, feel free to leave us a note in the comments. Thanks for watching our video. We really appreciate it. If you liked it, give us a thumbs up below. If you really liked it, maybe think about subscribing to the Paid Media Pros YouTube channel and you'll get alerted every time a new video drops. If you really, really liked it, you can help support the channel by checking out some of the t-shirts that we're wearing on our merch shelf, as well as looking at the Super Thanks button.